<laughs> okay, um, the first section, nature of amateur radio. Um, how many people know that there's an amateur radio station on the International Space Station? Oh, cool, cool, cool. Th this is one of the cool aspects of the hobby. Um, and the astronauts make um, at least one or two contacts a week with schools as a, as a uh, not only a, obviously a, uh, the wow factor of students being able to ask questions of astronauts, but also um, the, the, I suppose, the promotion of the hobby of amateur radio. These slides over here, which are unfortunately a little bit dark, um, that is South Hobart Primary School. Um, a couple of years ago, they did a contact with the ISS. You can see all the students standing there with their questions, <laughs> waiting to ask um, ask this guy actually, Doug Wheelock, who was the commander at the time. So uh, that's uh, that's them all asking questions of uh, of astronauts of all sorts of stuff, um, and uh, it's a real buzz <laughs> when uh, when you see that sort of stuff. Okay, nature of amateur radio. It's intended to facilitate the hobby. And it's actually embedded, um, this is something you don't need to know, but it's actually embedded in the International um, Telecommunication Union radio regulations. Now those regulations are, uh, apply across the world to all countries. Uh, they're agreed by all countries. And there is a section of them that outlines amateur radio in them. So there's not too many hobbies that are embedded in international radio regulations. <laughs> so um, uh, interesting little, a little, a little fact there. Um, it's authorised uh, under, uh, uh, by the ACMA. Um, and so what that means is to transmit, you need a licence. Um, and this is what this training is all about. Um, there's all sorts of different types of licences. There's um, CB, there's land mobile, there's aeronautical, there's maritime, there's all sorts of stuff. And, and obviously broadcasting as well, radio and television. Um, operates on frequency bands allocated to amateur use. And I'll go into that scary document up on the wall in a minute. <laughs> um, and we share some frequency bands with other services. So what that's where we refer to being secondary in a band. Um, so there's a primary user and then there's a secondary user. In most of our uh, amateur uh, bands, we're actually primary, but in some of them we are actually secondary. So there is a, we share bands. We share uh, bandwidth and bands. Um, again, um, broadcasting, aeronautical, there's lots of different uses for these bands. And in fact, if we have a look at the, that, this document here, um, and it's just just look at the colours. The pink colour, if you can see the pink colour, is actually amateur service. Yeah. So yeah. you can see pink colour there, 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 and all the way up uh, until we get. There's even one right up here, um, and this is going from very low frequency to very incredibly high frequency. So. But you can see also uh, that there's lots of other colours there <laughs> and lots of other uses of the, the spectrum. So, um, so it's, it, it can be used by anybody and everybody um, and most of those areas are actually, they are licensed to use those particular areas uh, for particular purposes. Um, now there's another document uh, that's available on the WIA website called the Amateur Band Plan. So this relates to just those segments which are amateur. And the amateur radio band plan is a, is a plan that's, um, if you like, it's an agreement between amateurs, um, an agreed uh, position on what, how you operate and what you actually use in those particular bands. And it's there to, to hopefully facilitate better use of the bands by amateurs. Um, and so, you know, in one, one part of the band you can be using Morse code, in one part you can be using voice, in another part you can be using a digital mode, a computer mode and all sorts of stuff. Now the band plans, there are band plans that are outlined, here we go, in the back of the foundation license manual and you'll notice, you'll notice that it gives you the band and it also gives you primary service, so SSB, CW and all sorts of stuff in here.
that's that's an example of band plan charts. Now, what I'd suggest you do is probably go to the WIA website because the band plan charts are updated quite often. Um, because they're what we're trying to do there is uh, align with international use. So um, other other countries, other regions that use bands in particular ways, we're trying to to align with those so that if you go on a particular frequency, it's the same use. In Europe, it's the same use in the US, it's the same use in somewhere else because potentially those bands can take you that far. So, so and band plans, so, and just make the note there, worth checking semi regularly because they, they actually change quite often. Um, just uh, little tweaks and bits and pieces as things change. Now, as we go through, what I'm, what, you will come across these question slides. Um, the slides give you an example of the sort of questions that you potentially are going to come across in the assessment. These are taken out of the question bank. Um, so, and this is a good example. <laughs> Anyone want to have a guess? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, so, so, um, so. <laughs> The, the questions, we, we're not trying to trick you or do it, anything like that. It's, it's, this is the sort of question that you, you may get in the assessment. Um, and if we come across these question slides, it's just an example of the particular topic that we, we're talking about.